doing the holographic waterfall dance. All right, I'm, it's time for bed. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? 100% just saw a bald eagle. We don't have those here. I mean, we do in the winter time towards the river, but they don't, I think, show up until like January. And I know it was a bald eagle because not just me, but everybody else in traffic just stopped because it was flying very low and everybody was looking up like, uh, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. That was weird. I was hoping to get on video, but I, I don't know where it went. Uh, okay, starting another vlog in the car. Doing that again. Well, this isn't gardening related. I'm running into Pier 1 real quick because Christmas shopping. A family member told me that there were some nutcrackers here and online it said this store has one of each left. So let's hope they still have them. I guess the real question here is going to be do I remember which ones she wanted? Uh, we'll find out. You. And the other one. Done. Ew. Pretty. Oh, someone missing an earring? If you are, it's here at Pier 1. Got that done. Lots of goodies over there. Got a few nutcrackers, a couple mugs. They had some really cute snowman mugs. I love snowmen. Snowmen are so cute. And uh, there are lots of other tempting things in there, but... Not today. Not the time of year for that. Oh, those fog lights are dancing in the camera. Okay, that was fun. Going to resume normal normal vlogging. We'll get back to some plant stuff here. Something. I don't know. Moving forward. Well, that's pretty. Yep. And through the sunglasses, still pretty. So pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty grass. All right, I'm home now. I went to the hydroponic store a few weeks ago, actually, just haven't gotten around to messing with any of the stuff I picked up. But I got this float and grow tray and insert starter 55 site thingy, my bob, that you use for cuttings. And I was thinking when I got this that I could use it in the aquaponics tub. But I think that, uh, I really, actually, I don't know what I was thinking, because that would cause a moldy disaster and probably probably not go over all that great. But uh, I'm going to pop this open and I want to see what it looks like. I'm pretty sure this is just going to be like your typical tray with plugs in it, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, so I can already look at this and tell that this is basically just an overpriced yeah, germination kit. Not much different from the Jiffy kits that they sell at the large hardware stores. Uh, that's a disappointment. Yep, nothing special here. Though I might be able to take this out. So I probably could float it in here, but I think it would just be an absolute disaster and a mess. This is not my preferred method of rooting cuttings, but it was only a few bucks, so I thought I'd give it a try. These actually are fairly decent plugs, though. It actually might be kind of nice. This is a little bit better put together than when they just have the little peat pellets that you drop in the cells and you add water and they... Yeah. I'm not going to do anything with this right now, so I, I'm going to stop talking about it. Wasting time. These lights are so annoying. This is my fish tank. No, oh, that does not look... Okay, so I have Ecotech Radions on here. They're LEDs and they constantly overheat and clog. Sand gets in these fans. I have to take them apart all the time. This whole area up here is enclosed. I put these on a 2x4 on top of a 2x4 so I can move them around if need be. I can adjust the heights on them, all those things. I have an exhaust fan up here as well. It's just too much. So I went ahead and I got some greenhouse plastic from the hardware store. It was 14 bucks. Cut it in half. So now I have a new lid. See, and the point of this was really just to make sure that I'm keeping the salt from vaporizing up into the fan, which they stupidly put in the bottom of these. It should be up here. So now that I've fixed that, I can take these apart, clean them up. I'm not doing that in this video. That's it's going to take too long, but this is kind of the first step to getting things back in order is getting my lights functioning properly. So, yeah. 
another use for greenhouse plastic. Easy to do. It does kind of put lines in the water though. Ugh. And so what's happening is these have different white colors they can put out. And with them being messed up from their fans not running and getting too hot, they're cycling through their different phases, the different types of light they put out. And it's stuck on this ugly brown color. It looks terrible. That, okay. All right, that, that's enough of that. Bye-bye. Ugh. I really need to dust up here. Gross. That looks really pretty, though, doesn't it? Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is complicated. It's not really complicated, just don't know how to describe it. I have this table in here, a piece of shelving that is, and this is meant to have water running through it, but it's angled the wrong direction. It's angled this way. I need it angled this way. I want the water running from the back to the front so that I can keep a pad out here to collect any debris or anything that comes out from the plants when the water's moving through. So basically I need to take this whole thing apart and shift it. Which can be fun, because that means I need to pull all the orchids off, get a nice, good look at them. This is kind of like the rehydration station out here. So, I'm going to do that and uh, see how that works out. Who's got two thumbs and feels like a moron right now? Yeah, that'd be me. I forgot that this is a garage and the floor is slanted. So this wasn't... It, I just... I feel really stupid right now. Fixed it. So what I have going on here is I have this sloped a little bit back, running a siphon that goes from the filter above the pad so it's clean water, comes down and runs through the table, just like so. It's gonna be deeper down here than up there. You might be wondering, why am I doing this? There's actually a few different reasons, one is to have a higher humidity underneath the plants. The water moving, there's, there's gonna be more humidity than if it's just standing like in a humidity tray. Also down here on the deeper end and in this tray is a good spot for me to propagate cuttings. This also helps oxygenate the water by having it move across this broad surface area. Uh, overall, it should just be better for the plants. Now, I went ahead and just tossed these guys on here to show you what I was talking about. I'm not going to leave the orchids sitting in water like this. I'm actually going to put down a layer of rocks. Literally, rocks. This is a hydroponic growing media. And you know, there's all this stuff it says about it right there. I like this product because it's not supposed to alter the pH. It's clean. I don't need to rinse it heavily. So I'm going to put a layer of that down, a heavier layer towards the back than towards the front, so that they're not in direct contact with the water. But if I need them to be, I can just scoot the rocks out of the way and set a pot down in there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here it is full of rock. It's got a decent flow going through it, even though it's out of focus. I probably don't want that leaf quite in contact. And I can tell you one of the downsides to this is that it's not level because these are rocks. I could use Leica, but it would go everywhere. I don't want that. And what I'm going to be using this deeper end here for... Like here's this Nepenthes. I don't think I'm gonna leave the Nepenthes like this, but if need be, with the rocks around it, so it's got a little bit more depth, I can anchor it down in here. Oh, sorry, camera's all over the place. Like that. All right, I have these terrarium plants here. Same thing, and just work them on in here. Like so. They're gonna stay hydrated a lot better like this. And there we go. So I got my terrarium plant set in here. Terrarium plants, you know, they're in these tiny little pots. They always need so much extra help when it comes to hydration. So this should help, because you can already see that I have two spike moss plants in here, one here, one here. They're already dehydrated, so hopefully this is going to help keep them going along a little bit better. The Nepenthes, I'm not leaving the Nepenthes like that, I don't think. That's quite necessary. It's been doing just fine sitting there on the shelf. Try and level that back out. And then I'll have the orchids sitting on top of this, and that should be pretty nice for their roots. Especially this guy. 
Yeah, he's gonna like that. So there we go. I got that all loaded back up. Looking good. Now I have these two pieces that fell off of my large epidendrum. They're kind of desiccated. I was rooting them in here. I had an air pump moving bubbles up so there was vapor breaking around the roots. But uh, I think instead for now, I'm just going to kind of set them on top of this media. See how that goes. That might be way too wet. I'm just going to have to keep an eye on them and see. Uh, and I also have some moss here that I think I'm going to take a little piece off of and just set it right there. I want to see if that does better there than it will if I enclose it into a terrarium type setting, which I think is what I'm going to end up doing. I'm trying to get this moss to take off so I can keep using it. But that's a little bit easier than I've been keeping it in here and rotating it. It's been a pain. It's not great for it. So I think that'll be better, but I'm going to give it a couple days and see how it goes first. Now this rock product, I'm new to using it. It said it was clean, no rinse. I should have known better. You should always rinse your stuff first. I didn't. So it was pretty dusty. It got the water kind of cloudy. That's okay because I need to clean these filter pads out anyways, which I'm going to do here pretty soon. You guys are, probably don't care about that. It's really gross. So all I do is I flip it around and I take the pads out, rinse them, put them back in. It's not very entertaining. And then I'm going to add some new carbon in there. And there's a new pump coming in the mail today too, so I might wait until that gets here. Yeah. But this is... This is nice. I think this is going to come in very useful. And this is also this rock in here should be really beneficial to the fish in that it's going to add a lot of surface area for biological activity, nitrifying bacteria and whatnot. And apparently some of the pieces do float. So I have to go through and pull those out because the koi will eat that. And in here, I can't remember if I talked about this or not, and I'm not really going to do heavy editing in the vlog because I've been uploading every day, and the weekend vlogs were intended to just be raw, uncut things and got out of hand. But, uh, so this also is a good propagation tray where I could fill this with some type of, I would prefer synthetic material. The rocks would probably be fine too, but I'll probably be using maybe rock wool, probably not rock wool. Actually, um, I'm going to be using a spongy type material you use in fish tanks that I can cut and put in here and poke holes and stick things in there for rooting. <laughs> Nifty. So there's a lot of uses behind this table. See, they already think that there was food there. You're wrong. I do need to... Clean these filter pads out though because there's a lot of dust in the water. Need to get that out because I need to soak my orchids and that's not that's not gonna be great for things, but considering, you know, I put probably 15 pounds, if even, in here. It's not that dusty, but the water was more clear before I did this. I prefer for the water to be crystal clear, since I use this to water my plants. So I need to do that. I'm just waiting for UPS to get here with my new pump. So I was up here trimming the uh, calfa out from that hanging basket. This had a calfa coming all the way down from spring and summer when it was outside. There's the trimmings. And I found, look at that. Isn't that gross? A leaf full of eggs of some sort that have hatched out. So whatever it is, it's too late. And this could have been on these during summertime. They might be really old. I have no idea. But... Pretty gross and kind of cool. Wonder what kind of eggs those are. So yeah, I was cleaning that up because the begonia is happy, but that is not. Elephant ear, uh, in a video several weeks ago, I pulled these out of the ground, cut them back, tossed them in a pot. They're doing great, not getting quite enough light as you can see how they're reaching out. I did see some mealy bugs in there, so I need to pull this and clean it and do all that stuff. I hate those things. But right now I'm gonna clean this out. Or I'm gonna try. Okay, new pumps here. The pump that I have is 1,200 gallons an hour. So every hour it cleans or moves 1,200 gallons through there. Probably less than that because there's a height increase. This one is supposed to do 2,200 gallons an hour. We'll see. I'm a little confused because this looks smaller to me than the one I already have. So maybe they sent me the wrong one. I don't know. I'm going to set it up and figure that out. 
I also right now have the waterfall filter running into the in here because I didn't see a reason to twist. It's a long story. It's fine. It's temporary. Not a big deal. But I had to. A lot of water got dumped out of here while I was, you know, back washing those filter pads. I can't. I can't talk today at all. I'm so sorry. So uh, I'm slightly annoyed. I was looking at the serial number here on this new pump. See if I can do this with one hand. And, uh, or just like, not even the serial number, but the information on there. CTP 800, IPX8, 8,000 liters an hour. Awesome. That's like 2,100 gallons an hour. But look at the old pump. So this is the original pump. It's the same thing. So what this means is the pump I ordered last year, this one, they sent me the wrong one. So this really isn't an upgrade. It, the flow is definitely better, but I, that's more than likely just because the new pump is clean. Like, really, really clean. Ugh. Oh well, I main thing was I needed an extra pump to use for watering the plant, so I have it, but it's not an upgrade in filtration like I was hoping. But there are ways around that, and I'll figure that out later. On to more important things. This sticker has been driving me crazy, and I cannot get it off. I've tried using a razor blade, and it was coming off in little pieces. I, I want it to look nice and neat, so I've left it there for now. But uh, I just got a hold of some holographic contact paper. It says it's non-toxic. It's good for all-weather use, so um, uh, I'm about to make something look really pretty. What do you think? Looks pretty magical to me. I like it. Obviously, it still looks messy, but, uh, looks better than a sticker. I mean, it looks like a sticker, but it's hollow and so pretty. Holographic waterfall. Doing the holographic waterfall dance. All right, I'm, it's time for bed. I've, I've been doing this too much. So far, so good with the new lid. I need to do something about these bubbles, but it seems to be working out okay. I'm gonna wrap some presents. These are the nutcrackers you saw at the beginning of the video. What I didn't show you was this guy. It was on clearance. He's real tall. And his colors aren't very Christmassy, but I don't know. I thought it was cute. And the cat agrees, so can't can't doubt the cat. I guess he can. They also lick their own butts. Oh, what are you doing? Pumpkin. That was very nice. Oh, and grabbed a couple of these mugs that were on clearance. Still need to get the stickers off of them, but I like snowmen. I think I like snowmen because you can use them all winter, even though these kind of have some Christmas colors on them. But look how big they are. I can put so much caffeine in here. Or I can drill a hole in the bottom and turn them into flower pots. That might happen. I don't know. We'll see. You think you're being helpful? Yeah, you're not being helpful. I'm just trying to eat the tape. You gonna be my little helper? Nope. Not gonna be my little helper. I bet this is gonna piss you off. There we go. Okay, I don't think I can wrap presents with one hand. Nope, not happening. This has to be the messiest wrapping paper ever. Ugh, it's pretty though. I also realize I can't wrap presents with you guys right now because some of the people who are getting these watch these videos, so... Uh-oh! Almost done, though. Now that the clock shut up. Like I said, I'm not really all that great at wrapping presents. My technique is horrible. But I try and make it look kind of nice. Especially because... I don't know, a few years ago, one of my sisters pointed out to me that it's not fair, apparently, with boys. And I think they're true. This is true. Uh, <laughs> my sister said, it's not fair that the sons can do a terrible job wrapping presents and a horrible job picking out cards, but mothers just love it. Okay, camera fell down. But despite, you know... All of that, the mothers usually just love it no matter what because it's so sweet that it was from their sons. And I was like, that's really funny. But it's also kind of true. So, ever since then, 
try and put a little bit more effort into the wrapping because in years past it was pretty terrible. I mean, it's still pretty horrible. I don't know if the camera's showing what's happening over here, but um, it, it's not. It's not good. So, almost done here. Don't know what's in frame. Well, that was really cutting it close. But it's done. Done. Pumpkin. Hey, we're done. Hey, look at that. Crystal clear. And still magical. Give this a little knock. I always do that before I feed them. There you go. Uh, happy fish, clean, clear water. I'm happy. Okay, apparently my fish are camera shy. Uh, I felt like these guys had had enough of a soak that I went ahead and I pulled them out so they're just sitting above the water, which I think is much better for them. The spike moss, I think, may already be toast. I think I went too long without watering that. I Spike moss is tricky for me, which is weird because I like to water my plants, but they're in such tiny little pots, they dry out very quickly. Now, anything that's in a ceramic or terracotta clay-type pot, these I'm treating a little bit differently. So, uh, basically, I have this Oncidium inside of a plastic pot, and there's a small layer of styrofoam down here so that the roots aren't in constant contact with the soaking wet pot. Because so I think that that's just a bit too much. But this way the pot can remain wet and create a nice humid environment around everything, encouraging the roots to grow. The roots will seek out the moisture, but they won't get stuck inside of the pot or potentially rot from being too wet. And hopefully this is going to be the most helpful to the orchids back here, the ones that the squirrel orchids from a video... A few weeks ago, I know uh, this guy back here, this epidendrum, that's the Lakeview Angel, not looking good. I don't know if that one's going to make it, but there's still some green roots in there, so it could potentially still put up some cakeys and be okay. Because this epidendrum that doesn't want to focus, it really doesn't want to focus, but it has tons of new roots coming up. And I'm seeing uh, new root tips on these two dendrobiums, so that's great. And hopefully this will just help further that. I may need to go through and poke some holes in the top of this pot, though. Because I'm not sure that there's quite enough air movement in there. I don't want to rot it. But we'll see. But most importantly, this is a big part of why I wanted... To put this table in here or get it with that water moving through it. My humidity is at 54%. Now I know uh, that doesn't seem very great, but I've been struggling to get my humidity above 40% with humidifiers running and this water moving slowly through these wet rocks. That's all it took. Okay, we dropped to 53, but hey, that's still an improvement and I'm happy about that. Normally when my humidity has been around 50%, it's been right after a very heavy watering or me misting everything, but everything in here is very dry right now because it's cold. It's really cold outside, which it wasn't supposed to be, but the weather people can't seem to get their information right. So I, I don't water heavily when it's cold. It's 66 degrees in here right now. Um, when temperatures go up a few more degrees, I may water. But So that's the humidity. 53% is what it's saying. When things are dry, the plants are very dry. The ground I checked is all dried out from me back flushing the filter. There's one plant back there that's very wet and that's from me back washing the filter into it, back flushing the filter into it. Uh, but that one plant would not be enough to raise my humidity that much because humidity was 37% yesterday when I was doing this. The humidity outside right now, I think it said is 42%. Yeah, I had to check, 42%. So. This is fantastic. Still, I'd prefer the humidity be at a minimum 60%, ideally 70%, but I'll take it. This is a huge, huge improvement. I mean, it's, it's fantastic.
that I was able to do it without a humidifier, too, because the problem with the humidifiers is you have to keep refilling them, which I know doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but there's already enough to do out here every day. I don't feel like adding on to what's going on. I want this system here to be working with me and for me. So I'm doing that, and I'm doing it with the siphon. I'm not running a pump. There's one pump running everything in here, so I don't have to worry about the electricity from a humidifier or from an extra pump. So it's actually working out quite well. Now, I don't know if increasing the flow of the water through there may help bring the humidity up even more because the more the water is moving, the more it's going to evaporate. We will see if I end up feeling like actually installing a secondary pump or maybe just a second siphon line to double that. I don't know how much of a difference it would make, but I am very, very, very encouraged to see a 13, 15, no, math. 16% increase in uh, nine hours just from doing this. That's amazing. It's going to make taking care of the orchids so much easier. Speaking of orchids, got some new blooms today. Let's see if I can't finagle that out of there. There we go. And this is one of my SVO dendrobiums. This is Dendrobium Cheryl's Glory from SVO, crossed with Dendrobium speciosum, Beechwood. You can see it's, it's honors and things down there. I got this guy last year from Sunset Valley Orchids. We've got some spikes. This pot is very cool. They must be liking the cooler temperatures over there. I get closer to the flower. There's the flower. Looks nice. It smells very good. It smells like honey. Speaking of which, I have to keep an eye on this for the mealies. Those mealy bugs, because whenever things go into spike, those mealy bugs show up. I bet there's probably even some on here. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. But yeah, so that has three, four spikes. Got one down here. I'm afraid to take my hand off the pot. We have a spike developing here, there, there, and there. So four spikes on this guy. Not bad. Now, they're not the biggest, prettiest spikes. But considering this is its second year with me, I'm pretty happy about it. So I can tell from the way these grows right here, leaning out. I need to adjust its lighting, but I'll wait until it's done blooming. For now, I'm just going to try and enjoy those flowers. Yep, I see the mealies. They're on there. Those little buttheads. Not the end of the world. I'll grab a cotton swab, a Q-tip, dip it in alcohol, and dab it on those guys and get them off of there. But yeah, look at how nice. So nice. Smells amazing. I think the flowers are really pretty too. They're, the petals are heavy. They're almost waxy. And you can't really see it on the camera. You can see it a little bit, but they're sparkly and glittery, which that's always a win in my book. Hence the, hence this thing back here. Yeah. Yeah. Anything sparkly and glittery, glittery, anything sparkly and glittery makes me quite happy. That's that guy, which means my other Aussie Den crosses are probably in spike too. Let me go look. Okay, no, it looks like the others, they're, they have teeny tiny little nubs down in there, but no buds. Not quite yet. But they should be spiking fairly soon, so this guy is early to the game. Actually, it's pretty early to the game. These don't, I don't think typically bloom until January, but I don't know. This is only my second year with them. But I love them. Very vigorous growers. And that smell. They smell so good. And I just realized that I completely forgot to upload a video yesterday. So, I made it like, what, 13 days into Vlogmas, 12 days, then it's not bad. Whoops, I'll upload an extra day or something to make up for it. Things are going to be all over the place in these vlogs for a while because I'm doing videos every day for Vlogmas, so it's getting hard to come up with vlogging while doing vi It's hard. I, my brain is scrambled. And there's a lot of fish stuff this week. Sorry if that's not your thing. It's just, that's what a vlog is. It's my life. It's not necessarily going to be directed towards a specific audience. It's just what I have going on. It is, however, time to wrap this up because I still need to edit this and get it ready so you guys can watch it. Hope everybody's doing well. You can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party, Instagram, Tropical Plant Party, and Twitter, Tropical Plant JC. Don't forget to leave that thumbs up. Helps the video a lot. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. I upload multiple times a week. And hey, if you feel like it, you can share the video too. And comment down below. I love talking to y'all. Let me know what's going on in your garden right now, or your indoor growing. If you've done things with your fish, or what, your pets, 
doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be plant related. It can be whatever you want to. It's just fun talking. All right. And as always, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.